Great, thank you for the question. It's really great to hear that students are interested in this subject. So first of all, we have to make elections matter to students. We need to show why elections should matter and how they're going to benefit students. And that goes back to making sure that when you're doing your role, you're showing that it's for a reason and that you're amplifying that student voice. There's a reason that you're in that job. And uh, we also need to be physically present on the ground and talking to students. There's nothing easier and there's nothing more effective than just being somewhere and chatting to students. I'm in Perth today. I was in Sam's a couple of days ago and the amount of feedback I've got has exceeded anything else over the last year. Um, by speaking to students, we can encourage that their voice is important and them that their voice is what we want to hear and that their vote is their voice. Um, this is also a stepping stone to ensuring that students are involved in political elections and that they have the confidence in knowing that they are empowered and their voices are important. And post-election, we need to take feedback on what's gone well and what hasn't gone well. Right, so I believe it's important that we establish a pathway from engaged students to student voice reps right the way through across campus officer roles. And um, the team is like, I know that the Student Association has done some terrific work in rebuilding and refining the student voice rep system so far, but there's lots of work more to do. Um, and using that student voice rep system to, to identify and encourage potential candidates for elections would possibly help sort of increase our sort of, um, you know, fill the gaps that we've got in our, in, in our uh, nominations. Um, and finding out what it is about the sort of roles that are discouraging folk from 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 running, um, you know, engaging post-election cycle to find out if it's an awareness issue, the nature of the role, the job title, the pay, whatever it is. Um, and I think that if we can develop that election offering so we have a wide range of candidates, it'll be such a huge buzz student election week with folk all over the campuses campaigning. And I think that'll create a bit of excitement and get more students involved in sort of um, in the voting side of it. Great, so this is something really important, especially as we have such a wide array of students coming all the way in school link, all the way up to PhD. And um, so I like the idea of learn to study, learn to study days. This is something that's been trialed in Perth previously, and I think it would be great to make those um, mandatory across the board. So having tasters for students to come in so they feel comfortable in the environment, they start to see some familiar faces, including ourselves. Um, I would also like all centres to have a dedicated member of staff that's responsible for helping students through this transition so they have a main point of contact and a familiar face that they know someone they can speak to when they're on campus and um, i also feel that high start or your student association should be promoting clubs and societies as well really helping students find that community it can be so difficult when moving up from school to college or university especially if you're coming from a different area so it's great to start meeting people with similar interests and you're all students it's something you can talk about Yeah, so I, I recently attended a workshop um, where we brainstormed with staff from a wide range of colleges and universities about the issues in tertiary education. And the biggest thing that came up was communication between schools, FE and HE institutions. Um, you know, and the other thing was sort of the, 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 the transition from the, the, the type of work that students do. There's huge difficulty curves. So one of the most important things is to, is to work together with the different institutions to to create a more seamless pathway in terms of the, the, the coursework. Um, but from a, from a welfare point of view, um, I think we could be doing more to engage with students on campus that are coming from schools. Could we have that fantastic op opportunity at UHI, being tertiary education institution where you've got school students on campus at least once a week. So engaging with these students before they come to college full time and, and, and transition events in the summer um, to make them feel part of the university before they fully transition to, to make it a little easier would be would be really helpful. Perfect. So the three things I like to yell are equity, inclusivity and the power of the student voice. There should be no ulterior motives, only supporting and raising the voice of students, fighting for what they want and creating a fair and inclusive environment. This is not about what I want or what anyone else wants, it's what the student wants. It needs to be that collective decision. All of our students should have amazing student experiences and the same support level, no matter where they are. Right now, this is all centralised. So I'll, I'll start with a bit of a cop out answer because as an elected officer, I think it's important to remember that it's not just my personal views that are important, but it's the views of the student body as a whole. And UHI being so diverse, we have a huge spectrum of, of beliefs and, um, and ideas. So 
it's important to remember that that's you know as much as I have my own ideas that's more important but um, in terms of sort of the general culture I think frankness and accountability like William said accountability is incredibly important but being open and honest with every bit of communication we have not hiding anything or masking it with complex language or specific word choices to be ambiguous um, and having those opportunities to be accountable to, to our, the students that elected us for our roles um, and the big one for me is equitable student experience being aware and understanding and really appreciating the unique nature of UHI and knowing that like Orkney, Perth, Elgin are not going to have the same learning experience, students there are not going to have the same experience. So being aware of that and capitalising on those opportunities to to, um, to enhance the student experience. So first thing, we need to be proactive. We know these are going to happen. We need to stop acting as if it is a surprise when it does. And uh, for ourselves, the main thing we can do is just be on the ground. This costs nothing or very little. We're already getting paid to be officers and the most effective way of getting feedback from students is being in front of them. And um, so that's what we need to do first and foremost. We need to ensure that funding is only being directed to things that directly impact students, not things that are on the side. Um, as an organisation, we also need to become more commercially and then generally more sustainable, whether that be through business ventures, um, again with all that money being reinvested to support our students in terms of general funding cuts this is going to affect what we can do for students um, and we need to be there to support and again be completely transparent we need to not lie about what the situation is we need to be in front of them providing um welfare care and making sure that everyone is supported and understanding so we have to be present and vocal at every given opportunity any any time there's a there's a, a discussion about the student experience, we have to we have to be there to provide a strong and effective voice, and not just be there to make up numbers. Um, we should maintain and and improve our already brilliant working relationships we have with the stakeholders at the university and outside that. Um, but with with regards to cats affecting the association itself, we have to be vigilant and constantly assessing how we can deliver the most effective and efficient service for the student body within our given budget. But working proactively. We can work together with the university and on developing new revenue streams, you know, things like uh, tapping into corporate social responsibility funds from the, the new commercial ventures that are coming into the, you know, the green Freeport area, for example, or commercial ventures like an alcohol free bar, an arcade or something unique to, to bring some money in. So clearly my biggest weakness is not knowing how long a minute is and consistently going under or over. Uh, but other than that, my biggest weakness is that I'm an overachiever and I'm very harsh on myself, which everyone who works with me will know, especially when there are other stakeholders involved. I'm also very guilty of overworking to exceed, to exceed these goals or reach these goals that I am overachieving uh, when I'm passionate about something. On a personal level, I've also had various mental health struggles in the past, um, but I'm very happy to say that although a lot of these are from overworking, I'm now learning where to put in boundaries um, and I'm working on myself. And I don't see that as a weakness anymore, but instead a learning point and something that makes me personable to students and I can understand a lot of student experiences. Like I've already used my copy answer previously, so I have to be serious about this one. Um, I'm, I'm in my 30s, I've been interviewing for 20 years and I get asked this quite a lot. But I've learned the, the right answer is to be honest and, with yourself. So for me, my biggest issue is that I have ADHD. And with that, I have a lot of issues with executive function, you know, things like organization, timekeeping, losing stuff, which isn't great for <laughs> you know, any kind of job. But in the last year, the, the team have been so incredibly supportive with acknowledging and accepting that. And I've learned so many little tricks and, and tools from working with the Student Association that have helped me kind of overcome that. And I'm learning to make adaptations that I'm going to take on, you know, whether I get elected or not, I'm going to take this on for the rest of my life. Um, I think like William said, acknowledging your weaknesses is the most important thing because then you can grow as a person. I think that's really important for officers.